Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Episode number one of We'll See You in Hell, the new podcast featuring myself, Joe DeRosa, and my good buddy, Patrick Walsh, or P.T. Dubs, as I call him. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How are you? We're here under the Fangoria Network. We're going to be offering commentary on horror movies that you can watch along with, or if you're so inclined, just listen in your car. And I, We're going to try to make it entertaining for those listeners as well. I, I like that we're giving the listeners options. Yeah. Well, you know, in this Internet age, Joe, you have to. <laughs> you know, Pat, I've read that people want entertainment their way. They want they want it a la carte, Joe. It's not <laughs> like when you and I were kids and there was one channel and you had to watch what Papa Government told you to. <laughs> and he he's not talking about the government. That's what he called his dad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, today we're going to watch Children of the Corn, uh, which Pat has never seen, which made me think, I don't know if this will be a recurring theme or not throughout the show. Pat is certainly a horror fan. I'm a huge horror fan. I think I've seen a little bit more than he has. I was wondering if there would sort of be this theme where I'm showing you a movie you haven't seen before. It doesn't have to be that, but you know. Uh, we can do it however we want, but I certainly, of the genres, the one I've seen the least of would definitely be horror, sci-fi. Uh, because it's just never, uh, I, I'm a pussy. You're frightened of it. A at least as a child, I, I was always obsessed with comedy and other things, and horror was always off limits to me. But you are a cinephile, I'd go as far as to say. A million percent. And yeah. I've seen most things. But like when you get into like these considered classics, your children of the corn and all that kind of stuff, I've never seen them. So oh, well, that's, that's okay. I, I like that this might be a budding theme here. We're discovering it on the first episode. Yeah. I've read it. I've read all the Stephen King books. So you read Children of the Corn. At some point, I must have, yeah, because I read all his books. Well, I must have and I read it are two different statements, <laughs> Pat. I don't remember it, but let's start it off. And this is where the podcast is going to get a little tricky, but we're going to basically count down. Uh, we're going to start it, hit pause. Right. And then when we're all on the same page, one, two, three, boom, and then we all go on together, if you're watching at home. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do here is what I want you to do is uh, I want you to pause. Not yet. Hold on. When I count to three, I want you to pause. I mean, now this is the, these, are the, these are the hiccups of a podcast, Pat. We had it all set up here, and then the Apple TV just chose to go back to the menu screen. Why did that happen? Talk to Steve Jobs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, two stars for Children of the Corn. Two stars. Is what they're giving us. I got to tell you, I don't think it's a great movie. Well, now it's directed by Fritz Kirch. Right. Who, I have to assume, at least has some ties to the Nazi party. <laughs> <laughs> at least a grandfather who has killed a Jew at some point. <laughs> Fritz Kirch. I Jesus. Don't, I don't know if that's uh, slander or <laughs> no, not. I'm sorry. If you're listening, Fritz, I'm sure you're a great guy. He uh, loves all race. Let's let's look up Fritz Kiertz. Because, you know. Well, we let's start. I mean, like, we got 90 minutes to fill with our With, with our, our commentary. Let's start the movie. Yes, so I agree. So You're so, going to click on the play button. You're going to see the spinning wheel. Right. And as soon as you see the first frame, pause it. Hit pause. And that'll make sense in a minute. So on three... Uh, pause this podcast, go find the movie, hit play. When you see the spinning wheel, great. When it's the, the first frame comes on, hit pause. Okay. Which also looks like a spinning wheel. Yeah. To be honest. So uh, one, two, three. Play. Okay, you're here. You got the first frame paused. And now on three, we're going to hit play together. Here's why we did it that way, because everybody's load times might be different. You might have shit internet where you're at. I got the good stuff, people. I know my load time depends on the lady. Hey. All right. <laughs> Disgusting. What's the matter with me? <laughs> All right. On three, we're going to hit play. Uh, you were, Again, you were paused on the first frame of the film. One. Wait, is it on three play or on? Or one, you two, three, then play. Okay, so one, two, three, play. play. There we go. Terrific. I got audio, Patty. You got audio? I have audio as well. Looking at. Just the most bargain basement graphic here for Image Entertainment. No offense to the people at Image Entertainment. Well, I mean, I know some of the folks over at Image 
And oh, they said, you? yeah, they said they chose not to put money <laughs> into the graphic. They wanted, they wanted to, it on the screen. Yeah, they wanted it on the screen. Right. Uh, I got the old Fritz. His full name is George Keith Kirsch. For some reason, chose to take on the, the name of Fritz. Yeah, he was like, let's really SS it up. One of the greatest title screens in this movie. Look at that title screen. It pops. Very man. commanding. It pops with a yellow font. I like it. Uh, here's what else Fritz has d- d- directed. Tough Turf. T-U-F-F? Yep. Okay, I don't know what that Very means. good. Winner Takes All. Is there anything we've heard of? You know, you know don't read all these. <sighs> Swamp Thing, but the series. Okay. Not the many of the movies. All right. Uh, the Stranger, The Hunt, and a Crayola Kids movie. So this is it. How weird is that? So your first movie is Children of the Corn, which is kind of a cult classic, and I think probably did okay at the box office. And then he just does a bunch of nothing? I'm curious as to what this made at the box office. Let's see. I'm going to go to reception here on old Wikipedia. Oh, not ha- there's budget. $800,000 budget. You ready for this? Yeah. $14.5 million. Yeah, so that's like a f- you made 15 times your money. Yeah. That's a great deal. Yeah. Good job, Fritz. There will also be uh, bits of math information throughout this <laughs> podcast. And from there, he's he moves to the Swamp Thing series. I feel like Fritz got a raw deal. Maybe it wasn't was the next thing. It was just oh. down the line. Maybe he was difficult on set. I huh? mean, the movie looks like it was made with... My dad's old home movie camera. I'll say that so far. It does. And this this opening voiceover has always disturbed me. It's a little boy talking, and it disturbs me because I'm like, is this boy going to be evil? Is he is he going to die immediately? Is he an unreliable narrator? Is what you're saying. <laughs> Very smart not to have a grown up narrator, because then you yeah. say, "What's well, one of the grown up kids of the corn?" Now let's talk Stephen King adaptation. Yeah. Oh, so here, here's this guy. This ki- here's the kid from the Burbs with the red hair. That Who, looks. So I always called him a poor man's Eric Stoltz. Yeah, and the well, the modern day equivalent is the Shermanator from American Pie. Yes, and I'm not positive they're not the same person. Well, they could be at least related. I would say. Speaking of Shermanator, Linda Hamilton involved, who was the star of the Terminator. Yes, Linda Hamilton is in this film. I don't think I've ever seen her in anything else. The, other than the Terminator series. I only ever saw her in the Terminator 1 and 2, which is why I was thrilled for the Terminator Salvation cameo. Was she in it? She's in it. For, her voice is in Ugh, it. Her voice is, is in so it. It's terrible. It's a terrible movie. I'm telling you, I don't know if you're going to like this one much better, Pat. Okay. I mean, it's a, it is a classic. <laughs> yeah. This scene's great. Now, you're in a, we're in a diner. Things are being zoomed in on slowly. Okay. Things are being dumped secretly into drinks, so something <laughs> bad's about to happen Those here. Those corn shakers look mighty suspicious. Here we go. Look at this schmuck. Doesn't know what's <laughs> about to happen to him. Look at this guy. Here we go. The ki- and the kids are all just standing around the perimeter of the dining room, staring ominously at all the grown-ups. Nobody seems to notice no anything. No one cares. Happening. No. This kid. But now... Did the kid control that woman putting the powder in the coffee? I no. I we'll find out. He's just over. He's overseeing. They're grabbing their throats. People are obviously choking now. Poisoning right, right, right. is happening. And they're, f- look at this lady. I mean, is that how you would choke? Would you choke like that with no. wide eyes? Absolutely not. Also, here's my question. Why, when people are choking, do they grasp their throat, <laughs> the thing that needs loosening, and they yeah. clench it? Why do they do that? Well, I don't know. I, I haven't seen anyone choke in real life. That might not be what happens. But maybe you're just <laughs> telling everybody, hey, my throat, help, choke. I mean, well, even if that is what you're saying. Uh, uh, there, here goes a hand into a meat this, slicer. This scene was also in Kingpin. <laughs> You'll remember they put his hand in the bowling thing. I don't oh need to see God. blood splatter on the six-year-old's <laughs> face. Kid seems to be kind of loving it. Well, the kids are evil, so I can't... That kid's evil, too? I don't know. I don't remember. If I'm six years old, I got man blood on my face. I'm going to be like, oh, my God. Let me at least wipe this off. Now, clearly, the kid outside, uh, Malachi is his name, uh, that looks like the young Doug Benson. Uh, he's the uh, he's the overseer of all this. Okay. So everywhere in Gatlin that day, Gatlin's the town they live in, uh, the kids all murdered... The parents. All right. So now the kids are running the town, I guess. Uh, oh, Pete Horton. Wings? 
No. That's Tim Daly and Steven Weber. Again, Tim Daly. Rich man's Peter Horton. <laughs> Peter Horton was on uh, 30-something. Yes, and he was in Singles. Yeah, yeah, he was the biker. Yeah, yeah. I love Singles. I love it's it, too. An underrated movie. I love Singles. You know what part always perplexed me uh, in Singles? Let's talk, because I just watched it. When she goes, when she goes, I'm going to make a salad... She makes the most gigantic fucking salad I've ever seen. She's like hacked apart the cucumbers and carrots with like a, it looks like she cut them up with a samurai sword. Just these hunks of vegetables. I'm like, who the fuck eats salad like that? Um, that couldn't have had less of an effect on me. I, it, it is always, I've always found it confusing. And I always thought like, that's clearly some character trait thing. Like that's some subtlety about the character I'm supposed to be understanding. And I never got it. Oh, I didn't. I, I just figured she was making a big old salad, and they wanted it to be visually exciting on well, the you screen. Eat, you eat salad like that, you're going to be a fat shit. <laughs> Defeats the purpose no, of salad. You, you can eat vegetables all day and not be. I know. Fat. Right. It was a it was a joke, Pat. Oh, I mean, I if like we want to pick apart every bit now. I didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> let's talk best present day. Wait, what year was that opening? I didn't notice that that had. <laughs> Uh, I just saw uh, Southpaw with Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. which is, is corny, but I enjoyed it. The character's name is Billy Hope, if that tells you anything about the tone of the movie. I mean, But uh, they talk for 20 minutes about how he's going to be boxing at this upcoming charity fight. Uh-huh. Uh, for, like, the let's say it's the Boys and Girls Club. Right. They keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. Then they cut to the exterior of the fight, and you hear the bell go off, and they put up on the screen a title card that says, Charity Fight boys and girls club <laughs> they've not done any title cards the whole movie I, like the entire theater was like we know southpaw do they <laughs> well you don't have to tell us do they keep up with the title cards after that at least no there's not a, another title card in the film so some executive was probably like are we gonna be confused that's ridiculous as to where they are and and name the guy hope so everybody gets it yeah there's also a scene where Hall. Uh, he has an estranged daughter, and he's helping her with her homework, and he's in a really dark place. And she's like, help me uh, with these spelling words. And he does one word, and then the second word is helplessness. Oh, God. And I bet, Pat, I bet you felt helpless at that point in that theater. It's a very heavy-handed movie, but I did enjoy it, and I, re I do recommend it. I, I like the film. It's written for Eminem, and then Gyllenhaal's kind of trying to do the Eminem thing. And with him, it seems a little like minstrel show, kind of offensive to me. Uh, that was how I felt when Ed Norton did it in that Couldn't De Niro more. in that De Niro Couldn't movie. Couldn't agree more. It was also very uncomfortable. Hollywood, <laughs> Fifty Cent, Fifty quote Curtis Jackson end quote Cent is not an actor, and we have to stop <laughs> pretending that he is. Is he bad? He's terrible, Joe. And they give him job after job. He's better than Common, who is the worst rapper actor. Well, Common was in Terminator Salvation. Well, there you go. No further questions, Your Honor. Yeah. Ludacris is a bad actor. I like Ludacris as an actor. <sighs> Wait, do I? No, I like, well, I like Ice Cube as an actor. Ice Cube is a fantastic actor. I like Ice T. But that doesn't tea. mean everybody is. Yes. Uh, Ludacris, I remember being pretty good in, in uh, what's that movie, well, like the racist Pulp Fiction? What was that movie <laughs> called? Uh, the racist Pulp Fiction. Oh, Crash? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like all the racist stories. Was, he, was, it, was Ice Cube in that? No, Ludacris, oh, Ludacris was in that. Yeah, he With was Lorenz fine. Tate, who I haven't seen in a while. Yeah, I always liked Lorenz Tate. By the way, we've, we've sort of drifted away from the movie for a second. Right now, Linda Hamilton is doing a song and dance num number. A striptease where it seems she's putting more clothes on throughout. Now, on the rich man, poor man scale, where do you put Peter Horton? Above or below Steven Weber? Definitely below Weber. Uh, above daily? Uh, no, I put daily above too. Daly is a solid enough actor, but I really liked him as the screenwriter on Sopranos. I know you don't like Sopranos. And Weber, I think, is a very funny, likable dude. I didn't see him in The Shining for TV. I, I wouldn't watch that. I mean, I don't understand. Stephen King prefers the Stephen Weber Shining. To the Nicholson Shining. I know, I know. I, I don't understand. I, 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 I tried watching it because Stephen King said he preferred it. Yeah. And, you know, his whole argument was it was more true to the book, which, okay, that's fine. Right. You could be mad at Kubrick for, for 
ruining your book. I've got no problem with that. You can say I hate the Kubrick version of the film. Yeah. I got no problem with that. And you can say that the miniseries with Steven Weber was a better adaptation <laughs> of the book. I got no problem with that. Sure. What you can't tell me, though, is that that fucking miniseries was entertaining or that anybody was buying Steven Weber as yeah. a lunatic. No, it's true. And, it, you know, it's just it's simple math. Steven Weber compared to Jack Nicholson. There's no scenario where Steven Weber acts a scene better. And I think Weber would tell you the same. I don't know. I met Weber once. Pretty pleased with himself. Sure. I met Weber as well. <laughs> Weber uh, nice enough but he yeah. guested on a sitcom I wrote for and uh I don't know if he had like uh, glanced at the script. I don't know if he had touched a script. Yeah. And it was in front of an audience and it got a little tense. No offense to to Stephen Weber who I do I do like. I, I find him very funny, ways. handsome yeah. man. Did the fat guy on wing Let me tell you this. Now you were on better call Saul. I'm going to go ahead and butter your bread a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the fat guy in Better Call Saul who, spoiler alert, dies at the end of the season mm -hmm. has the heart attack. That guy was great, and he's also on a HBO show called Getting On or Getting By, the uh, medical show. That guy looks identical to the fat guy from Wings, but they can't be the same man because they're 25 years apart. Who's the fat guy from Wings? The fat guy with the mustache from Wings. Did he ever act again? Well, I can look it up. Crystal Bernard on Wings. Did she ever act again? By the way, real quick, how much does this kid look like a young Paul Rudd? Well, I'm, it is a young Paul Rudd, is it not? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to look it up. Hold on. Did you see Ant-Man? No. I liked Ant-Man. I love Paul Rudd. I like comic book movies. I don't want to see Ant-Man. It's pretty entertaining. It just it, Marvel it t is turning everything into a comedy now. Like oh, Age of Ultron was like was like Expendables level one liners. Uh, I didn't see Age of Ultron, but I think all those superhero movies, like Terminator Salvation, is a perfect example. You have to have some humor because these movies are ridiculous. Terminator Two is a funny movie. Terminator Salvation, you're not. They act like it was Schindler's List with the level of intensity. Right. I don't mind a, f a little bit of humor, but I don't want a comedy. Sure. Ant-Man is largely a comedy, and I didn't mind that at all. Well, and then it's they, called Ant-Man. And then they just said that the new, the guys that wrote the Vacation remake are writing the new Spider-Man, and they said it's going to have a John Hughes feel. Uh, what the, What are you doing? I don't do that. <laughs> well, we don't need another Spider-Man. God damn it. You and I saw that last one with Jamie Foxx as the nerd who turns blue. That was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. It was a real piece of shit. Hey, that who's, movie who can we get to play this nerd? How about one of the strongest, <laughs> handsomest men in the world, Jamie right, Foxx? Right. That doesn't have straight hair, yet he's going to be balding with a comb over. Just a, just a terrible movie. But luckily it was only three and a half hours <laughs> long. Now, Children of the Corn... Joe, where do you put that in terms of Stephen King adaptations? I've enjoyed Stephen Weber adaptations more. <laughs> I don't even know if there are any. Uh, I the don't. 80s really were the prime time for your Stephen King adaptations. Uh, it's insane. This is from the book uh, Night Shift, I believe. And yeah, Night Shift. Collection of short stories. You know what? Let me pull this up because it, it really is an uncanny. I bought this book when I was home last. I had never purchased it. I was home last Christmas. Yeah. And I bought it uh, while I was home for something to read. And uh, I was sitting at the table. My mom's a big horror movie fan. And I was sitting at the table with her the day after I bought it, reading her the table of contents. And I said, Mom, the money that this guy made off of this one book. Yeah. Just this one. Ready for this? Yeah. Graveyard Shift turned into a movie. Yep. The Mangler turned into a movie. What was The Mangler? A Robert England movie. Oh, okay. I remember the catch or the, t the the phrase, the famous line in the th uh, trailer was he goes, we all make sacrifices. Theatrical uh, release? What? Theatrical release? Yeah. And then they made sequels that didn't make it. All right. uh, the Boogeyman, which there's a mo horror movie called Boogeyman. I'm not sure if it's an adaptation of that or not. So we'll know. say that's a that's a that's a bonus track, possibly. Trucks, which was turned into Maximum Overdrive. Sometimes they come back. Yeah, that's a movie. TV movie. The Lawnmower Man movie. Obviously a movie. Never oh. saw The Lawnmower Man. It's a despicable adaptation of, of the story. The How story about itself is. Too? The story itself is great. It's about a weirdo, creepy lawnmowing service. It's not about a right. simple minded man that becomes a power god. 
Well, from age 10 to 20, I mowed lawns easily 20 a week at 20 a pop, bringing me a nice little chunk of change each week. Uh, Always an entrepreneur, Under Patty. the name The Lawnmower Man. Really? And that might have been what got me the business because I was kind of like, wink, wink, but I never saw the film. It's uh, it's it's not good. Okay. Not a, not one of Pierce Brosnan's shining. Oh moments. right, right, right. Uh, Quitters Inc. Not familiar. And the Ledge, which are both short stories that appeared in the film Cat's Eye, one of my favorite Stephen King yeah, adaptations. Yeah, you and I watched Cat's Eye. Yeah. Uh, Children of the Corn. And he also gets a piece of the twelve sequels to Children of the Corn. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's let's go to those actually. But I mean, I can't. I just it's it's the, the the amount of money. Oh wait, here's a, okay. Well, Stephen King, I would wager, is a billionaire, right? He'd have to be. I mean, he's got to be, unless oh, and Battleground also was was turned into a, an episode of Nightmares and Dreamscapes. Battleground's the oh. best episode of that. Oh, they hit that mannequin. <laughs> they just hit the young Paul Rudd with a car. <laughs> I'm gonna look up Paul Rudd and see if he was ever in children of the corn i mean it, it's uncanny how much that looks he like w- it, w- it wasn't him no. you sure yeah but what's your favorite stephen king adaptation well you know we've talked about this uh i go back and forth but you know i think you you'd said misery last time and i think misery me it's misery misery probably is the best that's a perfect movie but it's a thriller not a horror yeah but i mean it's i i have it in my horror movie section yeah of DVDs, I don't put it over. You know, I don't put it in the dramas. Uh, it's just a perfect movie. You know, have you? Ever, you should go sometimes onto Wikipedia or IMDb or whatever and look up all the actors who they wanted to get before landing on James Caan, because who, it's it's every actor in Hollywood. Who else did they want? All your big De Niro, Pacino, Hoffman, Nicholson, et cetera, et cetera. You look uncomfortable. Are you comfortable where you, the way you're I'm sitting? I'm fine. Okay. I mean, I'm always uncomfortable, but I, I'm fine. Okay, good. They wanted Nicholson. They wanted Pacino? Beatty, uh, Pacino, De Niro, basically every actor that was around before landing on Khan. I think Khan's really good in it, but I, I could definitely see any of the other people. I, I could not picture anyone other than Kathy Bates playing that role. No. Now, they're doing a Broadway musical of Misery with Bruce Willis. And Laurie Metcalf. Is it a comedy? I assume it's a dark comedy. Like, I consider Misery a dark comedy, but I'd like to see it, even why, though it sounds like it's musical, probably terrible. Why a musical, though? Oh, that I don't know. Everything doesn't need music added to it on Broadway. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of great straight plays up there. Sure, but people don't go see them. It doesn't put asses in the seats. I mean, look, all I heard about was that, that one that Chris Rock was in. Everybody was going to see that thing. What was that? Uh, I couldn't tell you if my life depended on it right now. Pootie Tang, the musical? I mean, Bradley Cooper did The Elephant Man. Was that a musical? No. Oh, all right. <laughs> no. No. John Merrick, not known for his song and dance <laughs> abilities. Uh, uh, wait, and you love The Mist, I remember you saying. Yes. that's. I was, I was struggling. I was like, I can't remember what I said when we talked about this. The Mist is, is way up there. The Mist is awesome. It's a contender for number one. I'll probably give number one to Misery and uh, number two to The Mist. The Mist, the fact that a major studio allowed a movie with that ending to be released blows my mind. I love it. Uh, I saw I've never it. heard an angrier group of people leaving a theater. I saw it with my parents, and we all loved it, and my mom was visibly shaken by the ending. Yeah. She was upset. Well, let's not say what it is. Maybe people, I bet a lot of people have not seen The Mist, and I think that's a shame. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing movie. And, and I love that guy. What's his name? Uh, the guy that played Tommy uh, Jane. Yeah, Tom Jane. I'm fine with him. Tom Jane. Now I'll call Tom, and this is not an insult to Tom Jane. Big fan. I call him the poor man's Aaron Eckhart. He he certainly is. Although Aaron Eckhart does nothing for me at all. I love Aaron Eckhart. I loved him in In the Company of Men. Everything else, I'm like, all right. I love him. I love him in every. I love Tom Jane and everything. Okay. Aaron Eckhart just has a higher profile. So. All right, that's fine. You know, after all, he was I Frankenstein. <laughs> Did you see that? No. Oh, okay. That's good. I don't like those movies. Like that was like that when they made Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman. I don't like like Never those like it. horror adventure movies. Yeah. Well, now they're rebooting all the old classic Universals, which yeah, 
Well, they did Wolfman three years ago. Nobody cared. They're going to redo. Well, they, it was terrible. They okay. they fucked it up. I swear to God, I think Benicio del Toro is an amazing actor. He's you French. watch, you watch that movie. I'm like, I, he didn't want to be there. Yeah, he's he's like mailing it in in a way where I'm like, I don't like he. It's he's not capable of being this bad unless it's on purpose. What I find interesting about Benicio del Toro is if there's ever a movie with any element of drugs. Benicio del Toro is like contractually required to be in it, and I find that a little weird. <laughs> well, what? I mean, he's in traffic. Traffic. It, he's in Twenty One Grams. There's an upcoming uh, movie from the guy who did Prisoners, which is a fucking awesome movie that <laughs> looks like Traffic, and Del Toro's in that. Okay. It's just like, why does every every epic drug movie get sent to him? That that uh, still uh, Oliver Stone movie, Savages. Del Toro was in that thing. He is. 90% I didn't see that. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I uh, he was in an episode of Miami Vice. Guarantee you, there was some drug Definitely business on that. Definitely drug paraphernalia in that. Well, how was Savages? Uh, I really like Savages, but it's just hot trash. It's really trash. What, in what way? Uh, it's just it's almost like an exploitation movie. Like it's a lot of like just nudity and people chewing the scenery and. Travolta hamming it up, and it was fun. It really was fun, but it's just trash. All right, all right. I never, uh, I never saw it. Stone lost me a few years ago. Yeah, I'll always see what he comes out with, but he's clearly lost his mind. <laughs> Wait, what's his new movie? The Snowden one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, with who's who's Snowden? Eisenberg. I th- no, isn't it like? Wait, is it? No, isn't it like uh, Matt Damon? No. Isn't Matt Damon Snowden? I'm, I'm probably not right, but I'm closer than Matt Damon. Oh, you know who's playing him is uh, Kyra Sedgwick. <laughs> Star of Singles, which brings us back to Pete Horton. I loved her in Singles. Uh, as far as like dream women in movies, for me, uh, Sedgwick is number one. Uh, I, and also, I'm going to go Holly Hunter in uh, Raising Arizona. No, I love a Holly yeah. Hunter, but I don't. Uh, that's not a dream woman to me. I love in the, that I movie. Love the I mean, accent. I really do. I love the accent too. Uh, broadcast news. Yeah, broadcast news. I see I, that. That to me is more dream woman. Holly Hunter. The movie opens with her sobbing uncontrollably on a bed, and I was like, "Yeah, dream woman." And you that got and you got Albert Brooks. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is playing. JGL Snowden. Good for him. I like him. You also got Melissa Leo in there. Big fan. Tom okay. Wilkinson, big fan. Mm-hmm. Nicholas Cage making his theatrical comeback. What's he going to be? Uh, he is playing. It's, uh, it's unlisted. Okay. So uh, gonna, maybe Barack Obama. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> it bothers me so much how Nicholas Cage is like a big joke now because he he was growing up my favorite actor and remains one of my favorite actors, and I'll still see what he comes out with. The fact that he has to do made for tv shit basically to pay off the dinosaur eggs that he's decorated his mansion with it's sad but he's still a great actor well uh, bad lieutenant port of call new orleans i look he was amazing in that i contest that uh it's it it rivals the original of course it does i mean it's a masterpiece in my I mind i watched honeymoon in vegas the other day that's a perfect romantic comedy and he is so funny in that that it's like it's almost unbelievable how funny he is. Like when he explodes and screams at people in that movie, I had to pause it every time. <laughs> and then Raising Arizona, of course, is as good as movies get for me personally. Uh, Matchstick Men's one of my favorite pieces I of his love work. Matchstick Men. I mean, it's him, Sam Rockwell, and uh, and the Rock. Uh, the Rock's not in Matchstick Men. Oh, the movie The Rock. <laughs> oh. That's, the movie The Rock stars Nicolas Cage, and also that's how I refer to but Sam Rockwell as The Rock. I was going to say Dream Woman. The what the fuck's the girl's name in Matchstick Man? Uh, and she's in Drag Me to Hell. Oh, you talking about Allison Lohman? Yes. Okay. When she shows up at the end, and you realize she's like a grown up. Yeah. And she's like that sexy like hustler. I oh, think she's a lesbian. No, she's married with a kid. I looked it up. Is she? Yeah, I'll uh, look up like. Women that have only been in a few movies like that that I think are hot, like and be like, I wonder you if they're think married. You've got a chance maybe who knows? They, they show you up think, at the improv one night. You think maybe her star has fallen far enough that she's willing to entertain a Joe DeRosa courtship? Yeah, I mean, I, I, who knows? Yeah, okay. Stranger things have happened. 
Because yeah, you read those things, you'll see a like real hot actress. You'll be like, who's she married to? And it'll be like, she married Key Grip. Yeah, Lawrence. Sandy Bullock married a Key Grip. Yeah, so it's yeah. possible. All right. She also married that dildo with the tattoos. Yeah, and he cheated on her, right? Yeah, how do you do Julia that? Julia Roberts married a Grip, I think. And Lyle Lovett. You know, there's a lady who's willing to explore the darker <laughs> side of men. <laughs> so now what's... I'm, rec- I'm tweeting, by the here. way. I'm tweeting, by the way, that we're recording the first step, so people can send All right. questions if they like. What's going on here? Well, there's a kid dressed like Charlie Chaplin. So, like, really, at the end of this, I can't even really say I've seen the movie because we're just shooting the shit. I'm gonna have to watch it all on my own. Well, what's happening is—is is this Bugsy Malone now? Or are they playing like they're adults? I th- think maybe these two children are marrying one another. I mean, they're wearing, wearing grown-up clothes for some reason. And so there is, is this a straight-up cult thing? Like, like does this go to places like kids fucking each other, or is it not that dark? No. Okay. No. It's just the basic the basic gist of this is, did you hear him just say, I act according to his rule? I did, in a, in a highly questionable accent. Him is uh, he who walks behind the rose. Okay. Creepy description. Sure. The Creepy rose of title. Form. Yeah, so they're yeah. they're they're in service to this god, and uh, and the children shall lead them, and okay. they're you know I think they're I think the basic plot is maybe we're just wiping out humanity, starting fresh, sure, with the children, in service of this god, the corn god. Yeah, now, I just saw a preview of Sinister Two, and I thought Sinister One was an excellent uh, horror movie, best horror movie of that year. I hands thought it down. was fantastic. Uh, and the opening scene of them, like, hanging, like, that slow motion scene I thought was, like, a perfectly shot scene. Yes. Loved it. Uh, but now Sinister 2 seems to have a very Children of the Corn element to it. Because the preview, yes. there's three people hanging on crosses in the middle of a cornfield. Yeah. So I guess they're doffing the cap <laughs> to COTC. Well, uh, oh, CO, very nice. Children of the Corn. I like that you already have a nickname for it, even though you've never seen it. Yeah. The uh, I I can't wait for Sinister Two. I am a little concerned with the yeah, with the whole like. Now we're going to show the other side of it. Right. This is going to be more about the, what the children are doing in their world, and yeah, well, like that never seems to work out when they try to go to the other side of the thing. You sure. know, like Poltergeist, the other side, which was a literally. Thing. Although in the Poltergeist remake, the only part that I thought was worthwhile because it it made me so angry and depressed because it was so bad and poltergeist is my favorite horror movie the remake when they went into the other side and showed you like the other world of souls was the only interesting development in the new movie i didn't even like that part because they ruined it by flying a fucking drone into it yeah yeah a lot of drone material on that one uh which which by the way was the setup for which, or excuse me, which was the which that scene where he comes in with all the merchandise and is like, even though we're broke, I bought all this stuff inexplicably. The hell was any of that? I, it was just set up to be like, I got this drone now. Yeah. I mean, they couldn't have written just this thing like, don't tell your mom you're going through a tough time, kiddo. I'm yeah. gonna get you this drone, and then the kid has to hide it from the mom, and then at the end he pulls it out. I've been hiding this because Dad didn't want you to know she spent the money, but we need it now. Yeah. Th- th- what was that, 20 seconds? <laughs> Ten times better? Yeah. I mean, I – so on my top ten movies of all time are both Poltergeist and National Lampoon's Vacation. We're in a summer now. We're going to see remakes of both. I went into Poltergeist like, all right, this isn't going to be one of your favorite movies of all time. This isn't going to be anywhere close to that. I lowered my expectations to their bare minimum, and I was let down. And I'm hoping Vacation doesn't do the same. It looks like it might be kind of funny. I don't know. You're, you're nuts. Ugh. You're literally nuts. I am maybe building my hopes up. I, now, here's what I'll say. I went into Poltergeist with only with moderate expectations because you told me it was bad. When so I bad. heard it was being made, I was thrilled. I thought the trailer looked great. Sam Rockwell arguably my favorite actor out there right now oh wow yeah i love him but yeah for so sure. i had very high hopes i was i was unfortunately let down and it wasn't that great the to me it vac- was like being kicked in the throat the vacation it remake bummed me out i mean I'm, i i become angered during the trailers okay 
I mean, just the redoing of the jokes yeah. and making them, like, more extreme and zany now. Like, the first Vacation movie feels like a real movie. It, or, or a real, excuse me, it feels like a real story. It's believable. To me, the stuff he does is just crazy enough that it's believable. Now you and get he's this. doing it out, out of love for his family, which, to me, make... I, honestly, I, there are times, especially if I've had 10, 12 drinks... Where at Washington Vacation on a Saturday night, I can get a little misty. Yes. Because he just cares so much about his family. And that seems to be lost in this, but maybe it isn't. I don't well, know. Well, I'm sure that element of it is there. But, yeah. I mean, it's like my point is is Chevy Chase driving with Christy Brinkley in the car next to him. and uh, When they hit, I don't like that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's believable and funny. And then this one, they redo it, and she gets hit. And Ed Helms just makes that face like, hmm. It's like you'd be screaming in horror, first of all. <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing with, like, how now they, they have the weird car, like, yeah. in the in their, like, oh, this, that, this happened again, <laughs> and it's not believable at all. Yeah. Um, the joke where Chevy Chase is like, you know who gave me that guitar? Bob Dylan. And then I the kid's like, and the kid goes, wow, you knew Bob Dylan? He goes, no, 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 just a guy whose name happened to be Bob Dylan. This is a joke in the trailer, in one of the trailers. And then he goes, but you know who gave Bob Dylan that guitar? Jimi Hendrix. And the kid goes, Jimi Hendrix gave your friend this guitar? And he goes, well, not the Jimi Hendrix. It's, 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 I'm like, what the fuck? That's like a 30-year-old joke. Yeah. It's not going to be good. Well. I hate, I, I like everybody in the movie. I wanted it to be good. Yeah. It's not going to be good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't get my hopes up about anything anymore in every aspect of my life, and it's it served me pretty well because I'm always like, "Yep, there's another disappointment." Now, went into Terminator Gen, yeah, thinking it was going to be a shit show. Me and Joe go. We go see term, Termi Gens, <laughs> front to back enjoyment. Had a great time. I enjoyed every second of it. Yeah, I had a really good time with Termi Gens. A lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. Certainly better than Salvation. Good movies this year. You know, I didn't. I didn't. I thought it could have less comedy, but I thought Age of Ultron was great. Didn't see it. Uh, I enjoyed Termy Jen, as you call it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Star Wars is going to be phenomenal. Sure. Uh, you, you can't call that as one of the good movies of the year. Well, I mean, look, I stuck they with could, Star Wars through the prequels. They could definitely fuck it up. Yeah, I mean, we we've seen that it is possible. Yeah. So, but uh, I am. I'm. Beyond, that's that's literally going to be the most excited I've ever been to see a movie in my life. Yeah, I think that's going to be that's the kind of movie where you like carefully choose who you're going to see it with. Like, I like there's a, like everything about it is kind of important, and I don't even really give a shit about Star Wars. I'm more more of an Indy Jones guy, which is why the fourth one was such a you know bottoming out for me. I saw it alone, so nobody could ruin it. I for wish me. I had, so I could have wept silently in the back row. I saw it twice on opening day. Yeah. I, I I liked it. I didn't think it was great, but I liked it. It had its moments. It had uh, more prairie dog reaction shots than I was expecting. I'll say Mi that. <laughs> Meerkat. Meerkat. They're not sure. prairie dogs. Shia LaBeouf's. Now, what's going on here? He's got a, a bloody pair of underpants. But i got to be honest. We've been talking so much about other movies. <laughs> I'm, I've lost where we're at in the film. Well, and that's probably good because I imagine at least half the listeners are not watching along with Children of Corn. <laughs> Uh-oh. Like also, nobody's died in a while. It's I they t t look the Steven Weber guy could be dead by now. I wouldn't even that know. That is true. There's uh, the kids have killed. I think they killed his dog. I think that handkerchief was around his dog's neck. Now, have you seen the Children of the Corn sequels? Uh, no, but I'm glad you bring it up because I want to look these up. So hold okay. on. Sure. All right, Children of the Corn sequels, and I own one of them. I know they go at least up to Children of the Corn 666. Yes. I mean, they were just, there was a guy sitting somewhere that was like, we I just got to make it to six. <laughs> we just got to make it to six. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, children of. So is it a satanic cult? Can you at least give me the bare minimum of information on this movie? It's a, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a cult involving, you know, the, 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 the underworld or black magic or something along those lines. I don't okay. know that they ever use the word Satan. Yeah. Um, but it is sacrilegious. Uh, 
you know, there's the creation of a weird sort of Jesus mosaic thing behind an altar and okay and um as you can hear right now the choirs chanting anytime sure. there's choirs chanting it's sure. a little hellish right yeah um okay the film series uh oh st- well this guy's about to die yeah i think yeah i don't think and then they cut the old mechanic wins this i don't think they cut away wouldn't it be great if he came out holding a kid's head <laughs> where are they driving by the way like this I, I'm not I'm not watching the movie really, but like the, they've been driving a very long time for this to be a movie. Poor Linda Hamilton spent her entire movie career in cr- cars driving away from people. Yeah, it's not fair. <laughs> she never. <laughs> you know what else? What, what other movie involves a lot of driving through cornfields is Jeepers Creepers. Terrible film. Let me tell you this: I like Jeepers Creepers a lot, and I like Jeepers Creepers two a lot. I'm gonna ruin Jeepers Creepers for you. I'm going to tell you this. Both movies were directed by a convicted pedophile. I know that. So that ruins it right there. <laughs> the man d- directed The Fun House. Francis Ford Coppola produced it. I know. I and they know. were like, hey, he molested a kid on the set of this movie. Then years later, he was allowed to direct Powder, which was kind of a hit with Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Powder, which is a very strange movie, but kind of okay. Powder oh, it's involves a, story. a lot of powder being shirtless. Yes, he was big on that. Yeah, it's a, and then it's, Jeepers Creepers involves a lot of teen boys pissing in cornfields, shirtless, etc. Right, right. And the whole time, I'm like, they entrusted a large horror movie franchise to a convicted pedophile. Right, right. This wasn't that long ago. And I love that his that his most popular work is Powder, which is a movie about keeping secretly keeping a teenage boy in your basement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the man's name is Victor Salva. I'm going to call him out. Victor Salva, we all know you molested that boy. <laughs> if you're there, listening. There's the dead mechanic, by the way. Yeah. But I, uh, I actually really like both Jeepers Creepers. I saw them in New York. I haven't seen them since. Maybe I'd like them. Well, let me. You won't. Let me ruin the movie for you. All right. Number one. And, you know, we are doing this podcast for Fangoria, and I'm glad this brought up, this came up, because this is something I've said in a previous interview I did with Fangoria. Fangoria. Uh, Number one, they do the worst thing ever. Actually, let me just ruin the movie for you in one sentence, and then I'll tell you all the other shit that sucks about it. Just picture the monster who drives a truck, even though he can fly. It's like Uh, a big sort of dragonfly bug-looking thing, right? Yeah, just picture the monster who's driving the pickup truck, even though he has the ability of flight. Fine. Having to go to the Getty station to fill up his truck, (laughs) which he has to do at some point. Yeah. It didn't have any shape shifting powers. Movie ruined. Did it have any shape shifting powers? No. Okay. That monster has to go to a <laughs> Sunoco and say, "I had ten on three. What pump was I at? <laughs> three. Now, what if he had a debit card and he could pay without? Did, did it look like a town where they had pay at the pump? Didn't to no. me. Well, I haven't engaged with a gas station attendant in in ten years. Well, that movie came out about ten years ago. Yeah, you're probably right. He right. walks behind the rose. Malachi's Maybe it had a full tank when he took the truck. He, it's his truck. He owns it. He lives in a house. Oh, he's yeah, got like a true. house he lives in. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Jeepers Creepers was the first movie to start that horror movie craze of like playing some old song over like a an upbeat old timey song. Well, I'm glad you bring that up. Wasn't it one of the horrible things about the movie? You mean the shitty joke? That at the end of the movie, you see what he wanted was Justin Long's eyes, and it's playing Jeepers, Creepers, Creepers. where'd you get those peepers? Yeah. Ugh. They have... I didn't hate it. They have the worst horror movie trope of all time, which is the black woman with the ambiguous island accent coming out of, like, nowhere being <laughs> There's like... There's always one of them. I'll tell you who the Jeepers monster <laughs> is, man. <laughs> I know a thing or two about a Jeepers Creepers, man. It's just, it's just a terrible movie. Yeah. And... You know who loves that movie? Who? The guy that played Miles on Murphy Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Grant Schaub? Grant, Grant, yeah. Grant and I shot an episode of Louie together, and we went to lunch. Yeah. I didn't realize he was, he was who he was. We were like halfway through lunch at this diner. I'm like, so what else have you done, buddy? He was in Jeepers Creepers? No, he goes, I was in. Uh, I was on a sitcom, and I go, what sitcom? And he goes, Murphy Brown. And I was like, yeah, he was holy a, shit, you were Miles. Role, yeah. And he was like, yeah. And we and we just started talking about, it was just the two of us. We started talking about horror movies. Yeah. And he we hit it off. We had a great talk. He's a yeah. great dude. 
But he was like, go see Jeepers Creepers immediately. You'll love it. And I went and saw it on Miles' say-so. Yeah. And I didn't have the heart to tell him later. When I, I, I talked to him later, and he said, did you like it? And I just said, yeah. I got to say, outside of, like, Rosemary's Baby, it's my favorite horror movie directed by a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> You know? <coughs> oh, boy. Jesus Christ. Wow. Yeah, no, I know. So these two are just driving. That's the movie? Yeah. That's, All right. It's Linda Hamilton. That's what she used to do. She she looks... She never aged. She looks exactly the same age in, like, Terminator Why 2. Why doesn't she still go work? Is it because she has a bit of a masculine face, if you'll forgive me? Well, I, I don't think that's what it is because I think I think she doesn't. It's because I'm thinking of her jacked up in Terminator Two. But I think her sort of rugged, slightly masculine quality is what makes a lot of men attracted to her. A lot of guys like a girl like that, you know, closeted. No, come on now. Well, she's wearing the the shorts are terrible. She's wearing like uh, calf length khaki shorts. Yeah, I mean she's not. She's dressed identical to Peter Horton. <laughs> yeah. Except she's just rolled up the the part on the appendages. but Well, the scene, I mean, look at those slacks. You, now, you couldn't get a, a female hero, a heroine, if you will, in a movie today wearing that? Are you kidding me? Well, here's what I like about your Lyndall ha Hamiltons of the world is she, lo and same with Peter over here. Yeah. Both good-looking people, but normal-looking people. Yeah. If that couple came into your diner you'd be like these are normal people uh -huh. you wouldn't be like oh these are the hottest people in town where'd they come from i uh n am never on board with hot people in movies and it's it's uh it's a problem and like you know jerry Maguire, i thought tom cruise was was really good in it but it was supposed to be tom hanks and you know in romantic movies like that i'm just picking a, a one random example when Tom Cruise is struggling to like connect with Zellweger or whatever, I'm like, both of you will be fine. It, it removes the stakes for me. Right. Like when Tom Cruise is like, oh, man, I might not uh, wind up with this woman. It's like, well, you know who you could probably wind up with is the millions of women dying to blow you just out of frame. Zellweger's in that movie? Isn't it Zellweger? Yeah, it's Zellweger. That was her big you know, thing. I always thought that that was... Uh, Joey Lauren Adams? No, I always thought it was a, an older Haley Joel Osment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you walk. You fell for it, Patty. I set I you up. You fell for it. I did. I'm glad to see uh, HJO getting some work these days. I'm happy he's back, too. He's great. And uh, I love the movie Tusk. It was my favorite horror movie of last year. Tusk was a disaster. You didn't like fine. it. I loved it. Disturbing, creepy. I love Justin Long, was which was disturbing. why it hurts me to say I didn't like Jeepers Creepers. I shared a 40 ounce with him once. I played poker with him. Once. Yeah, we were watching that movie, The Room, that shitty movie that people go see. Yeah. He knew my friend Ann, and he sat next to me, and I snuck 40s in, and he was like, can I have some of your beer? And we shared a 40, and then he like kind of like toured me, tour guided me through the film and was like, here's what happens at this part. Everybody's going to yell this. And very nice guy. Very nice guy. You know, since the moment I arrived in Los Angeles, I have, and I, you know, I love doing all this shit, and I, I feel like I've seen most movies. The Room I have never seen, because I'm always like, it's not, I can't watch it alone, and it's got to be kind of an event, because it's been built up so much, so I've just never seen it. But I want to get a group together and watch it. I would tell you this, it's so shitty, you might be able to watch it on your own and still enjoy it. All right. I mean, it's shitty in ways that are like, you can't even wrap your head around, like. Yeah. It's not shitty just like, oh, the boom mic came into the frame right. there. It's it's shitty where you're like, why is this green screened right now? What the fuck is going on? Yeah. Did uh, you like Johnny Depp in Tusk? I loved him. I was, my mother and I were howling. You're, you're criminally insane and so is your mother. Well, maybe I liked it because it was a movie I could watch with my folks and we all enjoyed it. You know. And I, it's, ju it's just disturbing enough. Yeah. I swear to God, last Christmas. Christmas. You gave me your heart. You did. And the very next day, I threw it away. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're going to cut me to the chase. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, if it's uh, it, the two nights or something before Christmas Eve, I was my first night home. My mom, dad, and I watched Tusk and then Bad Santa. <laughs>
Oh God, I love that song. I mean, I it would was, never watch it with my parents. It was a raw night. Yeah, I I wanted to watch it with my parents because I knew in my heart my dad was going to laugh to to the point of tears at them punching each other in the nuts in the boxing ring. Sure. And I was like, if I can just get him on board till that part, yeah, that's gonna make his night. Yeah. And he liked it, and then sure enough, that part hit. Man, he was he couldn't even handle it, man. When I think back on the on the the hardest I've laughed in my life, Thanksgiving morning, I was living in New York and I hadn't spoken to anybody for two months. Probably, I was like I was I'd become like Travis Bickle. I was doing push-ups. I didn't eat. I had no money. I had no friends. And two friends of mine came up from Missouri to visit me in New York, and we went at like 8 a.m. to go watch the Macy's Day Parade Ugh. and started drinking then and there because we couldn't even get a view of it. So we just started drinking. And we go into like a 1 p.m. Bad Santa, tripping and falling down the aisles, so drunk. And I swear each of us at different points in the movie blacked out completely, <laughs> like just went completely unconscious. And I was like, I'm going to have to leave because I'm in pain, and this movie is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and I still feel that way. The only other movies that made me laugh that hard were Anchorman in the theater and Kingpin in the theater. Now, I have a theory about Bad Santa. Kingpin is the hard. Kingpin and the original Kings of Comedy are the two movies. Oh, the Bernie Mac set in that? Jesus Christ. I couldn't. I couldn't. And then and, and, and Steve Harvey doing the Titanic band unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> cool in the gang, yeah. unplugging the guitars <laughs> yeah. on the Titanic. Yeah, I, I mean, I was that. fucking crying laughing. Yeah. Um, That's so rare and such a beautiful thing to happen. But Kingpin, like in the slow motion comb over scenes at the end or whatever, I was like, I, I am going to have to see this at a different time. <laughs> I'm going to have to collect myself and come back because I was rolling onto the floor like an animal. And I don't even laugh very much. I, uh, I, I'm a very <laughs> even-keeled person, but once in a while something will hit me, and I'm like, I don't know that I'm going to survive this. That's how my dad gets. That's yeah. how he got during that nut punching scene in yeah. Bad Santa. The part in uh, the part in Kingpin, I was, I remember going to see it so high with my friends. Oh, what a dream! We were so high, and we were. We, I had not seen marijuana when I when I went to see Kingpin. We were so high, and and we were like. Let's just go see this Kingpin movie. Like, maybe it'll be funny. Like, mm -hmm. it didn't... Nobody thought it was going to be funny because it was, like, the weirdest cast. And it, it was, was about bowling. Like, Well, do you know it was written for... Yes. Chris Farley playing Randy Quaid. Yes. And then he died. Yeah. It was written for Michael Keaton yes. playing Woody Harrelson and Jim Carrey in the Bill Murray role. I mean... And then it got <laughs> delayed so long that we got this cast. And if you had told me, hey, we, we got... Three of your favorite actors of all time, Farley, Carey, Keaton. And now we're doing, to me, at that time, I would have been like, that's the ultimate poor man's version. Right. I kind of like Woody Harrelson. I kind of like Randy Quaid. And, of course, Bill Murray is, is the best. Right. But I was like, this isn't going to be great. And it blew me away. That's, yeah. It, it blew was, me away. It was in that weird interim period for Bill Murray where he, the last thing he'd done was like the man who knew too little. Yeah, and the elephant movie, Larger Than Life. He yeah. was in a bad spot. And Space Jam. Yeah. So he For hadn't... me, Bill Murray has never been funnier than in Kingpin. He deserved an Oscar nomination. And apparently, he every day would read the script, rip it up, and throw it on the floor. And he, every line in the movie, every word of the movie, from what I've heard, was made up. He, he, when he, he goes running out of the potato bar yes. and he does that, like, hop on one foot and trips and falls or whatever, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, it's he's so funny in that movie that everything he says is, like, well, mind-blowing. We were in line. We were in line for the movie. Again, high as hell. And I sure. turned to my friend and I go, well, I go, why Why are we seeing this, man? This isn't going to be good. And uh, <laughs> Even following Dumb and Dumber, were you a Dumb and Dumber fan? I didn't know it was the same guys. And okay. I, I will confess this. I didn't like Dumb and Dumber that much. Ooh. I think it's funny. I think it's funny. But when I saw it, I, I kind of equated it to, like, you know, like Dirty Work, like one of those movies. I was like, it's funny, but I, I don't sure. love it. You know, like, I, I, mean, it I was moments. When I came out, Dumb and Dumber, when I was 13, Dumb and Dumber came out. So that was, it hit me in a real sweet like spot. I was, like, 18 when that came out. Yeah, that's maybe a little. So, so anyway, I saw, uh, so we're sitting there, and I said, why are we seeing this movie? It's, it's not going to be good. And my friend said. I forgot to tell you, my mom saw it today. Uh, 
she said it's the dirtiest movie she's ever seen in her life. And then I was like, well, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. And it's PG-13. It's definitely no, it's R. Di- no, 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 it's R. Joe, it's PG-13. There is no way it they, is PG-13. They have since released like an unrated DVD version. I know for a fact Kingpin was PG-13. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been allowed to see it. All right, fair enough. It, it, well, it is, and they they get away with a whole lot of shit in that movie. That I I can't really believe, but it's well, an amazing movie. I was sold from the minute Woody Harrelson walks in in the opening sequence. Actually, I was sold from the minute of the dad whistling and going "Sweeter than you who." Sweeter than you. Uh, and when, when Woody Harrelson's pizza, right? Grabbing the pizza and then doing the split and making the ball <laughs> stop and roll. Yeah. I was like, this movie is going to be amazing, I think. And then the hardest I laughed in the whole movie was Bill Murray saying, that's t- that's total bullshit. I pulled out of her way early. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I can't fucking believe that this is a movie that I'm watching it's right just, now. It's just, it's a fearless movie. And then the funniest, like, everything is the funny. Like, the funniest drink order ever in a movie. He goes, uh, the bartender comes over. He goes, uh, Tanqueray and Tab Sweets, and keep them coming. I got a long drive ahead of me. Right, right, right. Tanqueray and Tab? <laughs> right, right. It's disgusting. Gin and, like, <laughs> like off-brand Coke? <laughs> it's disgusting. And then the, the asshole in the bar at the end orders the soda, and he goes, Hey, sport, Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah. And it's the second greatest drink order of all time. Yeah. <laughs> when he tells, uh, you know, when he tells Woody Harrelson to eat the food outside in the parking lot, when he tells the women he's not, I'm not, t- not you, you. Yeah. Why don't you go wash that perfume off and come back to the table? I did that at a show the other night, and the girl <laughs> did not think it was funny. No, it's not something you could get away with in, in day-to-day life. I, I said, have. look at this girl. You are so hot. Yeah. And the girl next to her was like, oh, whatever. And I go, not you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And. And she was also very pretty, and I, I yeah. immediately was like, "I'm just kidding. I swear, I'm just, I'm just saying that to be funny." Right. And then eventually, I got her back on my side, but it took a minute. Okay. Uh, back to Children of the Corn. Horton's wearing some Seinfeld jeans. He's walking through a crosswalk. There's a scythe in play. Yes, and this whole town does look like the movie that the whole opening, uh, the, the movie Kingpin takes place in. It in the really opening. does. Scranton, PA. I'm from not far from there. That's also where the office series yeah. takes place. This the quality of this movie, like I believe that it was made for under a million dollars. It looks terrible, doesn't it? I mean, I don't think it looks terrible. I mean, it's from 1982 or something. So I think it's like 84. But if you compare this to the Terminator, even which was released in the same year, Terminator looks not great. If you watch a uh, non remastered version of it. You know, you just kind of get that first like DVD release of it. Yeah, it it doesn't look fantastic, and you know okay. the special effects are a lot more obvious than you than you recall. Sure, but it's you know it of course it's a little better than this. I uh, have a bit of a slight gas thing there, Pat. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, sorry. That Look at that happened. Jesus picture. That's scary. Yeah. For those of you that don't have the visual, it's Jesus with a blue face and big black eyes. That's very creepy. The kids did it to the picture of Jesus. Do Horton and Hamilton return, or are they killed, or what? I can't remember, man. I've only seen this. Oh, no. And the sequels, no. The sequels are, as far as I know, unrelated. Do the sequels have anybody in them? Like, sometimes in a horror movie franchise, it's like, like the whatever that one Texas Chainsaw Massacre where they have McConaughey and Zellweger in it. Not that I know of. Uh, yeah. These were all direct to video because that's how long ago they came out. Yeah. I mean, oh, look at this. Charlize Theron's in part three. I'm sorry. No shit. Didn't know that. She uh, takes the old top off. Uh, I mean, she wasn't against it for many years. The early horror movies are a great way to find your your big star. Look at this. News. Children of the Corn 4, Naomi Watts and Karen Black. No shit. I, uh, I bet they do get naked in them. I, well, I mean, Charlize is naked throughout Devil's Advocate in a, uh, just a, a really special way. Oh, I said the guy's name wrong. I got my characters mixed up. The Doug Benson kid is in I, uh, Malachi. He's Isaac. Okay. Because uh, he comes back in Children of the Corn 666. Okay. And that was same, a, same actor? Yeah, same actor. Who had really? gone away. Very interesting. His name is John Franklin. Uh-huh. He's 56 now. Uh, but he had, 
He Wait, has. How can that be? Because he has a growth hormone defi- deficiency. Oh, um, job. Yeah, but he, uh, but he, he's he's almost five feet tall, and uh, but very interesting guy. Left acting. And went and became like an English teacher. Okay. And like. This is his quote. After the events of 9-11, I saw the shallowness of showbiz and felt a great desire to leave a great, a greater legacy than just being Cousin It. I guess he played Cousin It in the Adams Family. In the movie? Yeah. You Teaching. In the hair thing? Yeah. In so the, his face wasn't even shown? Uh, no. I love both Adams Family movies. I think they're great. I never saw them. And Adams Family Values is even is like way funnier than the first one. And I think he's married to a man. I think he's, if I remember correctly. Okay. I think that's the case. Good for him. Anyway. Mazel. Mazel. Uh, so here are the sequel titles of Children of the Corn, which, again, I own part two. I've never watched it. It's called The Final Sacrifice, right out of the gate with The, the final. final. Yeah. Mistake. You never say The Final if you're, if you're doing a sequel. No. Chil- it's not going to be. <laughs> Children of the Corn 3. You ready for this? Urban Harvest. Oh, boy. Children of the Corn 4, The Gathering. They mailed that one in. I don't like that one. <laughs> Children of the Four, five, back on the horse with Fields of Terror. All right. Was that coming after Field of Dreams, probably? Well, 98. Oh, it's no, quite some time. Way after, yeah. Yeah. Children of the Corn, 666, Isaac's Return. And they, and they brought back the real Isaac. Yes. So now you're telling me when you say he has a growth home, are you talking he's like Simon Birch, like he looks like he's 20 and he's 55? No, I mean, if you see a picture of him, he looks, he just looks like a small guy in his 50s. Okay. It's not like a Dabney Coleman thing where you, where you can't tell if he's a kid or not. Dabney Coleman? I mean, Gary Coleman. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Now, Dabney Coleman looked like he's been 60 years old from the day, first day I ever saw him. But wouldn't it be a hoot if we replaced Dabney Coleman with Gary Coleman sure. in all of his famous movies? Let's get Mad TV back on the air for that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I can actually, Isaac, looking at him right now, he looks like he's 50. Yeah, he's probably like 20 years old there, seriously. Like uh, like Webster also, Emmanuel Lewis. But not quite as young looking. Yeah. So, he's got an old man face. He looks like an old Irish guy. He looks like a small guy. He looks like basically but of like the right age, I mean. every guy who's 50 in my family. Yeah. There you go. Here we go, back with the... Uh, the redheaded kid again. Are they sacrificing Linda here? I don't know. They got her on some kind of corn <laughs> cross or something. <laughs> this movie also reminds me of uh, The Wicker Man a little bit. Yeah, I've seen both versions. Now, there's another. I didn't hate the Nicolas Cage version of The Wicker Man. No. I, I mean, I own the original. The I admire, I, I like a million percent prefer an insane movie to a boring movie. Sure. So the movies that often get like put on a pedestal as being like the worst movies ever, I completely disagree because they're insane and there's some inspiration and excitement behind them. Sure. To me, just a boring piece of shit movie is always going to be worse. And, and sure. Like if I'm checking my watch a bunch, The Wicker Man, I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm watching, but I watched it till the end. I wasn't bored. The original one is nuts. It is not. It's a musical. They they do songs in yeah. it. Yeah. No, I love the original. And there's all kinds of tit and everything. Sure. Uh, we got two more Children of the Corn sequels here. You got Children of the Corn. They really mail it on these last two. <laughs> Revelation. Come on, guys. <laughs> guys. And Children of the Corn Genesis, which <laughs> takes away from Terminator Genesis yeah. for me. Uh, Billy Drago started in that one. Oh, wow. Who uh, was in Pale Rider. Oh, wait. I thought you meant the guy who played Ivan Drago. No, he played in Pale Rider, and he was in The Untouchables. Who did he play in The Untouchables? I like Pale Rider, and I like The Untouchables. Oh, he's Frank Nitti in The Untouchables. Okay. Greatest scene in the whole movie. Yeah, I agree. You know, your friend died screaming like a pig. Yeah. What's that? I said, your friend, he died screaming like a stuck Irish pig. <laughs> you remember that when I beat the rap? Yeah. David Thro- Mamet, Untouchables. Throws him off the roof. Did he sound anything like that? Yeah. My friend Aaron Wexler used to always say in college, Brian De Palma and David Mamet achieved the impossible task of making Kevin Cosner sound tough. Yeah. He, oh, it, he it, sounds like a hard ass when he does that. Yeah. I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great. I love the Cos. Maybe I shouldn't call him that. I don't want him to get mixed up with Cosby. Wait, who are who, Oh, you, you're saying Cosner. Sure. 
Yeah, I call yeah, him the I Cos. I always like Costner. You know, like I love him. He's just <laughs> like he shows up. You know what you're gonna get. I, you know, what his best movie is to me, an underrated movie for all you listeners out there, is a Clint Eastwood movie called A Perfect World. Okay. That Clint directed and is also starring in. It's Clint Eastwood, Kevin Costner, Laura Dern. For some reason, nobody's seen this thing. I only saw it because Mrs. Doubtfire was sold out in 1993. <laughs> and I was like, God damn it, I have to see A Perfect World. So let me get this it's straight. So you purposefully went to see Mrs. Doubtfire? Yeah, at age 13, you're goddamn right. Mrs. Doubtfire's a great movie. Still. Oh, boy. Still. Oh, boy. You're going to speak ill of Robin Williams now. Listen. May he rest in peace. I'm sad he's gone, but I mean, a guy passing the previous work really gets a whole refacing, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, that Mrs. Doubtfire is. I love Mrs. Doubtfire. That was like one of the movies that that he had to break that schmaltz mold from. It was like Mrs. Doubtfire, oh, Bicentennial Mo- Man. Joe, Bicentennial Man is an F, and I would consider it among the worst movies of all time of movie history. I think. Okay, All right. Without fail, most people listening right now at least will say Mrs. Doubtfire is a pretty entertaining movie. Hey, that did, we missed that kid cutting his chest open. No, I, I thought, saw it. I thought it was. People, back me up This here. chick's 42 years old. <laughs> How is she getting passed off as a kid? She doesn't even have a growth disorder. She's a full-grown woman. This is, this is a call-in show, right? You all love Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Give I'm going to tweet it and see what who writes back. Speaking of which, we've got questions. Okay, good. Bicentennial Man is as bad as it gets, and Flubber might be worse. Uh, here we go. <laughs> this is what I love questions. What do you got? Uh, let's see here. Somebody First said, one. I like the sound of this. I like the sound of this. Thank you, Danny35. <laughs> That's at Danny Beat with two E's, 32. Rob Lark writes, Isaac looked like a creepy puppet. True. Malachi was a toothy ginger. True. Who was uglier? Malachi. I feel bad saying that. Ah, he's fine with it. Malachi was uglier. There's your answer, All right. Rob Lurich. At Rob Lurich. Uh, here's from at Clive Gulch. It traumatized my wife as a child. She won't watch it now. Is it that scary? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem to be scary at all. Uh, like... It's a little freaky. Look, anybody saying the words to me, I'm at the, I'm under the command of he who walks behind the rose, I'd be freaked out. Yeah. I mean, what scared me when I was a kid were the boxes to horror movies in the, in the video store and also, like, kids' movies that were, to me, scarier than this. Return to Oz. I own it. It still freaks me out. Return to Oz is scarier than a majority of horror movies. It still freaks me out. Hey, let's put Dorothy in an insane asylum. That's the normal part of the movie. And they elect and they do electroshock treatment. Yeah. Uh, How much does the corn factor into the plot? Could the film exist without the corn element? <laughs> uh, That's from Ken Hanley. His handle is at movie guy, I guess. That Ken Hanley is uh, our man over at Fangoria. Oh, okay. Ken, I gotta say, corn's factoring in pretty heavily. And you're going to want that corn. I mean, they, you're going to want that corn. They've dressed the whole town like in corn husks, like it's Thanksgiving. Yeah. So uh, I, I agree heavily. The only child actors, this is from another one from Rob, Rob Lorich or Lorick. Another, are the only child actors who didn't grow up to be complete degenerates as adults? What is that? How is it possible that the child actors who oh, oh. corn are the only child actors who didn't grow up to be complete degenerates as adults? And that's true. We're just talking about how this guy leads a very healthy, happy life. Yeah. Uh, I assume Children of the Corn was just a drug-free set. You know, they kept Michael Jackson off set. They kept drugs off set. And these kids grew up to be healthy and happy. Yeah. I just, I, well, I think a big part of it is that a lot of these kids didn't work again after this. Yeah, that's true. The Malachi kid did. And, and, and the Isaac kid did. Yeah. But nobody else. I mean, and also, when you're, when you're under the good influence of a Peter Horton and a... <laughs> Linda Hamilton. Yeah, you I mean, feel like they they had good heads in their shoulders. These are nice people. Yeah, yeah you're it's in a nice like, farm uh, town. It's not like Downey Jr. was showing up. Like a 1984 Downey Jr. was coming to set with a vial of Coke. <laughs> I would dare to say, too, that with a film like this where you have to have minors acting in violent and murderous fashions, there's probably a little extra care on set by the adults to make sure that things are pretty light and bubbly off yeah. camera. That's something I've always wondered about. Like... 
for example, like there's a movie called Mysterious Skin. You ever see that with Joseph Gordon-Levitt? No. It's a Greg Araki movie. It's NC-17. It's uh, I will never forget it as long as I live. I'll never watch it again. Mm-hmm. But it was a masterpiece. Uh, well, what's it about? It's about child molestation. Oh, God. And there's really graphic shit in Did it. Did you say that already? No. We were talking about child molestation earlier for some reason. We were? And Joseph Gordon-Levitt. <laughs> but, you know, like, you know, of course, okay, so he was of age. But in a movie about molestation or a movie about something else, happiness, where the kid is hurt that his dad didn't try to molest him. I refuse to watch the film. I refuse to watch it. Well, Happiness is also a masterpiece, but I, it's I, very I, disturbing. It's, it's not a masterpiece. It's the it, To me, it's the depths of depravity. These are the only two times I've ever used the word masterpiece, so I, I don't know why I'm, I'm using it. I so don't much. need to see Philip Seymour Hoffman's Come Hit a Wall. So have you seen the movie? I got as far as his Come Hitting the Wall. Sure. And then him saying... But you'll watch porn. But he, here's the thing. This is Come Against a Wall used for art. Here's the thing. It, it's it's one of those things where it's like, I get it, it's depraved. He's talking to the woman on the phone, then you find out he's a pervert jerking off to her. Okay, that's disturbing. Then he comes, and you have to see him come. That's disturbing. Then you see his actual semen hit the wall. That's disturbing. <laughs> then he puts a postcard over it to, to cover it. I'm just like, fuck off, man. And then we're going to get to pedophiles in a minute? I'm good. I'm good. I think it's a great movie. W- what's What's the point of it? I'm saying... Give me the point of the movie. The point of happiness? It's just everything Todd Solondz does is like that. Oh, it, sure. I'm not I'm not vouching for the man's entire catalog. Right. But I certainly have liked most of his movies. But he's a provocateur here. But for what reason? It's like a comic get on stage and being like, Yeah. I was in Kmart and fucking the clerk in her ass. It's like, yeah. okay, dude. You know? Well, unless you were, and then it's a funny story. Well, then, it, you know, then it's just a nice time. What I'm saying is, like, that kid who has to play these long, intense scenes where he's jealous that his father didn't try to molest him, how do these kids, what do they say to the kids? How involved are the parents? How are they making sure that this kid doesn't grow up completely fucked up and destroyed? How do they do it? I think that they probably don't show the kid the entire scene. Yeah. They don't fully explain what it's about. They potentially have substitute dialogue on the other side of the character or a ca- camera with the other actor. Maybe. It all you know, seems it's like, like, like if I'm a parent of a child <laughs> actor, and I know these parents are often troubled themselves, but how do you just let your kid do it? Like with the, Because there's a risk of your kid growing up with the same trauma of it actually happening. Not to, on the same level, but like... You know, unless they shoot them in such a tactful, careful way as to not put them in any jeopardy. This is disgusting. The kid asks his father, would you ever fuck me? His father replies, no, I jerk off instead. I mean, it's just gross, man. Yeah, there's no way to make that kid, there's no way to make that scene fine for that kid. The kid has to say the, that line. Yeah, I just, I just, I, I, I don't, I don't get what the point of that is. I, I just don't get, I understand the point of making a movie that deals with the subject of child molestation or pedophilia. Sure. I get why a movie like The Woodsman exists. No, I didn't like but that. something like this where it's like, nobody's redeeming. The kid wants the dad to fuck him. The dad wants to fuck the kid. They talk about it, too. And then the dad tells the kid he jerks off to him. It's just like, well, I, I don't need this. It's There's t- something to me. It's like watching a beheading video. It's like, sure. I don't need to see this. Well, they did that exact same scene basically on Always Sunny where he was jealous that the priest didn't try to molest him. Well, they made it the basketball coach. It yeah, was supposed to be a priest. Mr. Bellamy. But that's, if it's played for comedic, that, then it's funny. You know what? Then it's Happiness, funny. and I haven't seen it in a long time, but that is played for extremely bleak black comedy because I remember people laughing when I saw that movie. The movie is a black comedy. Like it's a comedy. All right. Well, that, that gives it a little more slack in my book. I, I'd like to watch it again to see if I change my opinion. I'd like you to watch it again. All right. And think about you backing a film like this. <laughs> not backing it. <laughs> I mean, you, I'm not saying I, I love what happens in it or anything. Big fan of Dylan Baker. Big fan of Lara Flynn Boyle. Yeah, for sure. Uh, big fan of Ben Gazzara. Yeah, it's a great Big cast. fan of Louise Philip Lasser, C. Philip Seams. John Loves. John Lovett's the opening scene where he's getting dumped. is such a fantastic scene. I'd watch it again. It's Molly Shannon. Yeah, she's great in it. 
I also love Life During Wartime, the unofficial sequel to Heaven. Did you like Welcome to the Dollhouse? Uh, I never saw it, but... That's a real rough one, too. Or it's, a, it's a comedy as well. In yeah, I just didn't care that much about it. But, I mean, I think that, like, to me is like when he's... He, you know, I felt like he walked a better line, at least, from what I know about that movie. Oh. What happened? Just cut her face. I thought she was being sacrificed. Pat, I mean, at this point, this movie could literally be, a, be about corn, and I wouldn't even know. Linda Hamilton, I'm not going to say her name, but she looks exactly like a girl that I know. I just realized. Now, have you seen the sequel to Happiness called Life During Wartime? I absolutely have, and I like that a lot, too. Now, is it as disturbing? Everybody's played by different people. It's not as disturbing, though. Storytelling was very disturbing, which is his follow-up to happen. What is the now? What is the pedophile, for instance, doing in the sequel? I don't really remember, and I don't know that he's in it. I don't think he's in it. What's the Philip Seymour Hoffman character doing? You're you're barking up the wrong tree. I'd have to watch it again. No, well, I mean you just you said this guy's your favorite filmmaker. I thought I definitely didn't say. Maybe that. you know these. I have uh, my buddies John and Hayden, John Hurwitz, Hayden Schlossberg, who did the uh, Harold and Kumar movies went to school uh, uh, I might be wrong they went to high school with Todd Sullins's brother who is on the FBI's most wanted list for trying to blow up a building he is I may be wrong about the details I would I would make sure you're right about those details before you say <laughs> something like that so just so you know you might want to look it up but I believe Todd Sullins's brother is on the FBI most wanted list for trying to blow up a building and that no, he went to school with I, my friend I can look that up right now I mean would we're you? here yeah sure. I can I can't now, this is when they turn on Isaac. Why are they sacrificing their leader? Because he got power hungry, and Malachi now is the guy saying, hey, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the guy you should be listening to, not him. Okay. Is there any sexual element to this, like a weird, creepy, Amish, Mormon type, we're all banging kind of thing, or no? I think, you know, without them saying that, I think the idea is is that they are going to start the new Yeah. You know, and race. how, with everything being rebooted, how have they not remade Children of the Corn? Are they remaking Children of the because Corn? Because they keep making these fucking sequels. There was a remake on sci-fi, okay. which I would like to see. I think this is a very remakeable film. You sure. know, it's not a lot of special effects. Yeah. It's it's very character-driven. You know, I, Pet Cemetery is due for a remake, too, and I that was a great adaptation. As well. I love Pet Cemetery. I think they are actually remaking it, or they've been talking yeah, about it for a while. It's time. I'm ready. I also love the It adaptation and i can't wait for the remake it i lost a year of my life to the cbs miniseries it i couldn't go to the show i couldn't take a shower i scared the shit I out of me i couldn't do anything yeah. with my life we all float down here yeah it's it scared the shit out of me now i was so excited because they had uh the true detective guy the guy who directed season one doing the it remake and i was like we're in great hands <clears throat> it's gonna be fantastic right now he walked off due to creative differences, and they have the guy who did Mama, which is like an average at best horror movie. Yeah, I didn't care for Mama. So it's not going to be good. It's I didn't care for good. Mama. The kid playing the clown looks pretty freaky. No, it's the kid from We're the Millers. It is? You see We're the Millers? Yeah. We're the Millers is, a, is an all right comedy, but like that kid should not be playing the clown unless... He had an amazing audition, and they're going in a different way. Wait, it's that same kid? It's the kid who's like Dick gets bit and blows up and all that. Yeah. Well, I got to say, oh, yeah, that is him. I didn't realize that. That shouldn't that shouldn't be the clown. He kind of looks like a young Tim Curry to me. That's why I kind of was happy about it. I just feel like they could have done much better. I don't know. And, unless the kid's a man, an amazing actor, well, and he shouldn't write him He's off. also young. It's like, why is Pennywise the Clown 21? Yeah, I don't get that either. That's kind of stupid. Also, will they do that sp the spider shit at the end of this it that destroyed the miniseries? Is, how does the book end? I don't remember, and I read it when I was about 10 years old, and I don't remember. You read that book and you weren't scared? The book is way scarier than the movie. The book is scary. For me, it's hard to get scared by a book, but for some reason the movies always take me in a different place. Man, that po Jesus! Holy shit, that was scary. How much did that scare you? For those of you at home, my <laughs> dog just opened the door to the office but and walked in. But the dog in. wasn't visible, so it just looked like a door opening. And I thought a person's coming into the room. It was honestly very scary. Here comes he who walks behind the rose. As you can see, there was clearly a budgetary restraint <laughs> here. Well, they're using the uh, the tremors bit with the ground going up. 
We just watched yeah. Tremors a few weeks ago. Tremors is one of my favorite horror movies. You seemed oddly unimpressed by it. I wasn't unimpressed. I liked it, but I like Tremors in the same way I like Flatliners or The Lost Boys. You know, it's a fun movie. It's not scary. Sure. Uh, it's, it's just I mean, a fun uh, movie. A big part of it is when you see things, oh, my God, this is the worst special effects I've ever seen. That is bad. Oh, it's my like God, an aha that's video. terrible. Listen Jesus. To scream. Listen to Isaac scream. Did you hear that? I heard it. Look, it, in my life, I have not seen special effects that bad. In a, in a major motion picture. Yeah, I mean, I did just I did an injustice to the aha video by saying this looks like an aha <laughs> video. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that looked terrible. Now, Isaac is gone. I don't think I'm done talking about those special effects, Joe. That pixelated blob just ate Isaac. Pat's very upset. It looked like on a t they did it on an Atari. Yeah. It looked bad. Why don't these other kids look evil? A couple of them look evil, I guess. Now, here goes Peter giving the kids a speech. And he's telling them that they're they're on the wrong track now. Is there no sexual element to this cult? Pete, I mean Pat, you keep asking me this are question. Are they trying to recreate? You're telling them? me your favorite movie's Happiness. <laughs> what do you? What do you? What are they trying to repopulate across? the human race, or what is their goal? I think so. I don't remember. Then that's going to require some sex. You've Joe. asked me six times. I can't remember it. All I'm right. not paying attention. These people to the are movie. all of age. They're they're not supposed to be though. There's children of okay. the corn. Look at that guy. The guy looks he's like 33 years old. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now, Malachi just tackled Peter Horton for giving a speech about how they and shouldn't be listening. And then beat him with a, a, an ear of corn? Now, here is the plot of Children of the Corn 666. This is how Isaac comes back. You ready? Yep. Because he just was eaten by a pixelated Atari blob. He's gone. Uh, honestly, the worst I've ever seen, special effects. Hannah, the firstborn child of the original uh, Gatlin cult. So yes, they had sex. Patty, you happy? We found out Thank now. God visits the town of Cat Gatlin to find her real mother. On the way, she picks up a street pre preacher by the name of Zachariah, whose car broke down. He tells her about her name and then vanishes. After crashing into a cornfield, a lady sheriff. <laughs> It's described that way. Lady Sheriff. A Lady Sheriff. That's a good title for like a Kristen Wiig movie, Lady Sheriff. <laughs> Melissa McCarthy. Yeah. Uh, finds her, takes Hannah to, to a, Hannah to a hospital in town. Once there, she finds out as Isaac was not killed oh. by he who walks Spoiler behind right. the roads, but in, instead went into a coma. Okay. Well, that's not true at all. We just saw him evaporate into flames. Yeah. Did you hear that? Ooh, there is Isaac. Okay, he's not dead. What? Now, Isaac has... That might have scared me as a kid. ...a very deep voice, and he has now been possessed... By the corn devils? By the he who walks behind the rose, Pat. Who's he who walks behind the rose? The Tremors the thing. Okay. Oh, my God. I mean, well, you're really not following it. I haven't heard any dialogue. We've been bantering. I've been explaining this We've to you the whole time. We've been skillfully time. bantering. Now, this part's scary. Yeah, no, this would have scared me. I forgot about this part. I thought Isaac just disappeared into the blob. But no, okay, he's alive, and he'll be back in 666 in just s uh, 17 short years. Do you like uh, Christine? Uh, I never saw Christine. I never. I just didn't give a shit. I was like, I don't care about a car chasing people Yeah, around. it's pretty dumb but i like the book and the movie I like maximum overdrive though and Stand that was by cars. me is a great adaptation you know what that's way up the list for and it's not a horror no. adaptation but that's way up the list for best stephen king movies in my opinion same with shawshank and green mile they're not horror but they're both fantastic i thought is the green mile good green mile's great yeah it really is my mom loves it it's overshadowed by shawshank which is kind of a perfect movie but green mile's great well and frank darabout amazing in it Frank uh, Darabout behind all three. Yeah, the that's mist. true. That is true. Uh, Green Mile and uh, Shawshank. Yeah, I heard Rockwell's. Rockwell was a bad guy, right? Yeah. No, it's it, it's a dream for character actors, that movie. There's like eight great weirdo parts in it. You never oh, see wait. Green Mile. No, I never saw it. I, I Come just... over this week. We'll watch the Green Mile. All right. This kid. What is this kid from? We know this kid from something. Let me see. The kid that's going to help him solve the whole thing right now. I just realized he's a he's a young actor that grew up to do other stuff. All right. I need just just need one cut to this kid. One cut. 
Oh, I don't know who that is. That kid. Uh, what is that kid from? That is the kid from. God damn it! I gotta look this up now. His name's Joe. How about that? You think he's like a still a working actor? That kid was in other stuff as a kid. I know that much. Okay. I gotta find him, but he's telling him how to. He's telling him how to stop. To stop the demon that walks behind the rose. They gotta burn the field. What else would it be? Horton's selling this baby. He is. He's into it. How did he never have a leading role after this? He probably did. Well, he's thirty something. Oh, you're right. That was was thirty a something show. a good show? My parents loved it. I was always like, Ugh. I know the Golden Girls make a lot of jokes about it, as we learned last night. They do. One of my favorite Golden Girls lines ever. Dorothy, are you upset that you can't find a job? No, Rose, I'm upset that because they canceled thirty something. <laughs> I stumbled on it, but with yeah. she delivered it impeccably. She always did. I can't find this kid on here. Hold on a second. I got to go to the IMDb. His name is Joe in the movie. That shot of Linda Hamilton reacting to the danger was not convincing at all. Well, you know, I mean, I think at this part she's at this point she's over it. Oh, Job, not Joe. Job. Job. Robbie Kiger. Of the Doors. Was also in Monster Squad, Crazy Like a Fox. Oh, I love Monster Squad. I don't know what Crazy Like a Fox is. Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael. Yep. Used to watch that all the time. Was also in Still Crazy Like a Fox. A sequel. <laughs> sequel. Uh, One Day at a Time. I think that's what I'm remembering okay. him from. Happy Endings? What the hell is that? The show? Some, some movie called Happy Endings. Oh, no. TV the sh- movie. The show is hilarious. I don't know what the movie is. <clears throat> I'm remembering him from... Uh, from one day at a time. Mickey and Maud, you remember that film? Dudley Moore. Yep. Yep, I do. Yeah, I miss Dudley. Yeah, dead. What did he die of? An aneurysm or something? He was like fifty-five. No, he had some weird immune thing. Not, but it not not HIV. It was like some I don't know some weird. Okay. Is the corn taking Peter Horton? The corn is now attacking Peter. I didn't know the corn was a alive presence. You know, neither did I. Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, you ever see The Ruins? That was a cool horror movie. I own it on DVD, haven't opened it yet. The Ruins is great. Yeah, I got it one day on the when I was working on the Warner Brothers, Brothers lot. They had that gift shop over there. That's where I work. I, I buy stuff there all the time. Yeah, you get di- discount DVDs. Yeah. So I bought the Blu-ray one day, and I, I just never watched it yet. The Ruins is great, and it, it has some just fantastic nudity. Really? Yeah. Now, do you still enjoy nudity in a film? Absolutely. It really means a lot to me. Really? Yeah. Do you think any female will listen to this podcast? Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I think I think there's probably a lot of female horror fans out there that are big Fangoria fans and stuff. Yeah, I guess I guess you're right. I've I don't encounter many many ladies who are into horror but of course they're out there there's a whole goth subculture speaking of fans yeah let's get back to the twitter see if anybody else has written us any questions well, you didn't even have to say it because then now if there's not we're gonna look pathetic uh, it's our first one you know we're just trying to trying to reach the people well no here's a guy with a question for you is patrick the guy from the Sque- scream queens podcast <laughs> no i don't know what that is but that guy's probably great uh it's a podcast with a guy. Is his name Patrick Walsh? No idea. Okay. Doesn't say here. But it's a horror podcast. So here's another question. The fuck is Malachi up to these days anyway? Well, we already talked about that. Oh, not Malachi. We no, talked we about talked about Isaac. Isaac. Well, let's see. Malachi's probably still acting. I would guess. I know. I bet you he's been in. Hold on. Let's see here. Children of the Corn again. Back to the IMDb. I should just leave this open. I Anybody with that, like memorable a look is always going to have acting courtney roles. Gaines, handsome man in real life look at that guy yeah he doesn't look bad can't buy me love sweet home alabama back to the Fuge. what was he in back to the Fuge? i think he's like one of like biff's friends one or something goons, yeah uh look at this eight projects on the docket hey congratulations texas rising if you can be a working actor for like 35 years? Good for you. He's been on the middle. Look at this special effect. The fire? Yeah, like a weird brain. 
No, Here it's comes. Like a, it's like a cloud. I just wish he who walked. Look at that. Look at that. It looks kind of cool. It looks better than the thing that ate the kid. It looks like a brain cloud. I, I just said that. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, they said rain. I wish he who walked by in the rose was more. Yeah. Maybe he's more prominent than the others. I guess that looks okay. I like the way that looked. That looked like an old 80s Tron style effect. Yeah. Now they just torched the cornfield. The fire's spreading. They're standing and watching for some reason. <laughs> You'd think they'd make a run for it. There they go. They run the. What blew up? The he who walks behind the rose. Oh, he's made of gas? I mean, look, look. I think at this point they were like, just figure out how to end this fucking thing, please. <laughs> Get us out of here. Just blow the thing up so we can leave. But as we already know, do if you, you blow up in this movie, it doesn't mean you're dead. Do you remember, does this, is this uh, faithful to the short story or not? I never read the short story yet. Okay. I have the book. I still haven't read the short story. I was trying to read the ones I hadn't read yet. All right. Nothing better before bed than reading a Stephen King short story. Sure. I highly recommend Grandma, uh, which is from the... Uh, What's the what's the skeleton key? Is that the one with the monkey on the front? Skeleton key. No, skeleton crew. Excuse skeleton me. Crew, yeah. um, Did you ever see Monkey Shines? I never saw that because the box terrified me. Yeah, I see Monkey Shines. Is that based on a Stephen King? George though? Romero. Yeah, absolutely. Is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Monkey Shines is good, but it's I mean it's just about an evil monkey. The box is scarier than the movie. Do they use animatronics or an actual monkey? No, they just use a real monkey. Okay. You know, it's not like. It's it's like a it's like one of those little shoulder monkeys. It's crazy now. Whenever I go back and like, if I were to watch Monkey Shines tonight, I'd be like, the fact that this box scared me for so many years of my life, and this movie's I I have to imagine not scary at all to an adult. It's crazy. It wasn't scary to a child either. I saw yeah, it when I was a young not. boy. It didn't freak me out. Stuff like that didn't freak me out. Uh, you know, Deadly Friend didn't freak me out. Anything where it was like a crazy the the basketball knocks the head off. Yeah, she's like the yeah, robot right. girlfriend or whatever. Anything with a robot, anything with uh, 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 like an, an animal going nuts, I just never was freaked out by that stuff. Sure. It was always like supernatural stuff freaked me out. The devil, demons, some kind of like deformed monster thing. Sure. That's what always would freak me out. You like Cujo? Uh, no, don't care. Did you see it? No, don't care. Rabid dog, I don't care. But, Joe, you're an obsessive horror fan who has, like, the most obscure shit. you never seen Cujo or Christine? Don't care about either. Are they just the two things I just named, machine and do crazy. Now, if it was a man that turned into that dog, I'm in. <laughs> I don't care about a dog now, with to rabies. Me, a dog going nuts is way scarier than a man turning into a dog. I was never a big slasher guy. I don't like things that can really happen. It's just not that scary to me. I like stuff that can't happen, so and that freaks me out more i don't i can't explain it that's so weird because what can actually happen should scare you more insidious will always scare me more than wolf creek without question oh i'm, I'm the exact opposite uh oh the 42 year old lady's still alive yeah. by the way they just got in the car they thought all was good she's about to cut off pete's head he blocked it i've done a complete 180 and i'm very attracted to linda hamilton by the end of this movie I want to have sex with her like nothing else, and yeah. I love this movie. I think it'd be slow, and it'd be tender, and it'd be very passionate. I love this movie now. I've changed my tune. Really? We haven't even been paying attention to it. I like that part where Isaac came back with the demon face. Yeah, okay. I like that brain cloud we thing thing at the end. All right. I well, want to have sex with end? Linda. <laughs> wow, that was an abrupt ending. He just knocked some kid's head... He knocks some kid out by slamming her head with a car door. This is not the, the final shot of a of a quality movie. I'm telling you right now. And then it just said, the end. Knocks a kid out with a door. That's ridiculous. It just says, the John end. John Philbin, you think related to Rage? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised in this town. Look at this. That was one of the weirdest, most abrupt endings. It's an actor named seen. Dan Snook. Great name. Uh, sure. Well, we're in the credits, folks. You made it through. Children of the Corn. Here we go. First time out. I mean, I, I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're listening to it. I hope you tell your friends. I about hope so it. too. I mean, any podcast. I'm like, I don't understand why anybody would listen to this. But they do. But people just like these things. I listen to some. I mean, a lot of it's I think driving to work. Uh, 
I go on long walks. I like to listen to a podcast here mm-hmm. and there. Mm-hmm. Just by yourself, just a long, yeah. solo, romantic walk kind of thing. Yeah, sometimes I don't want to talk. I want to listen to people talk. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. And that should be the name of your book. That's a very long title, but yeah, sure. Sometimes I don't want to talk. I just <laughs> want to hear people talk. Yeah. Well, folks, thanks for tuning in. This is We'll See You in Hell on the Fangoria Network. Uh, we'll be back twice a month. Yeah, and uh, we'll see this. you on the next one. And, of course, feel free to suggest movies for us to watch on Twitter. Uh, we're trying to stick to movies that are on Netflix Instant. So you can watch them, too. We figure a lot of people have that. Everybody can watch it. But uh, please, if you know like a movie we might not have seen, if you know a classic you want to hear our take on, uh, if you'd rather hear us do more scene-specific commentary as opposed to shooting the shit, let us know what you think. We're trying to figure this out, too. I believe uh, I believe the man is correct. Do just that. You can find Pat at, at Patrick. The, go ahead. What is it? At the Patrick Walsh on Twitter. And I am at, at Joe DeRosa Comedy on yep. Twitter. Uh, we'll see you next. You'll, you'll hear us next time, and we'll see you in hell.